Oh, it's hot here. Fais chaud chez vous. Pourquoi? Pourquoi si chaud? Beaucoup de gens, huh? You see, I don't have time. I was so busy, busy, rushing, rushing because of time. I wanted to come earlier. Yeah, but because so busy, you know. I can't even go buy chocolate. Can't even think. No, can't even think about chocolate, really. I don't eat it normally, that's why. I don't like sweet. I don't eat sweet too much. If you really eat a good meal, you don't care about sweet, right? Whoever didn't see me before, right hand. First time. <laughs> I hope I didn't disappoint you. A very little chocolate. <laughs> Oh, okay, anyway, you can have a little bit more. The one who have not seen me before here, extra for you, share it between each other. Oh, you mean, ah, you eat a lot? <laughs> they have never seen uh, eat so much before you. You eat all my storeroom. <laughs> no, I'm happy if I can find it. Because I didn't have time to buy, you know, I forgot about it. I'm busy, every day, busy, busy, so much. I don't know why one person can be so busy. I also need to meditate like everybody else as well, you know? But sometimes very little or less, less than I would like to. Oh my, what to do? Yeah. So many things happen, you know, try to stop me to do my work. Huh? I say, even if I die, I do it, so I'll give it up. Okay. <laughs> Don't try to threaten me. <laughs> yeah, if they cannot bother me, they bother my dogs. You know what I mean? Oh, my pets or whatever, or my uh, helpers, yeah? I make trouble for them so that I'm more, more, more busy. You understand me? More busy taking care of them. More busy trying to, to, to solve that problem as well. Oh, all kind of thing. But I say, even if I die, I do it. <laughs> uh, they try to stop me, huh? Many things. Oh, we always have solution, eh? Yeah. It's, uh, it's the job we have to do and we just have to do. Right? Baby? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have choco? Chocolate? No, you didn't. You did. Oh, thank you. That's better for a lady like me. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a lady anymore. Do I look like a lady still? Yes. Not too much, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I'm running like like a busy woman, <laughs> like you at home, maybe. Are you busy like that? No. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Rushing, huh? especially deadline, huh? Sometimes cannot have time to drink even. You know. I wanted to drink, but only five hours later. Because sometimes uh, so one thing after another, you know, and, and you just cannot, cannot go. <laughs> and sometimes I make a tea, huh? a quick one, you know? You know how to make a quick tea, right? <laughs> it's a taboo, but I tell you how. <laughs> you put water in the cup, you know, the tea cup, not this cup, you know, the microwavable cup. <laughs> it's a bad thing to do microwaving, but I don't have time. 
I put water in it, yeah? I put the tea bag in it, and I put it in the microwave one minute. <laughs> and that's why I forget. <laughs> it stays in the microwave forever. <laughs> It beep, beep, and I hear it, but I say, okay, I know, I come later. And then I, f- and then it doesn't beep anymore, I got tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? The microwave beep too long, he, he run out of, of patience. So <laughs> he just stopped beeping, and I stop listening, and I forget all about it. So I don't have to drink that tea, also good, you know? Tea, what does good tea do for you anyway? What kind of tea? How can it be good for you? Is there any tea is good for you? Is it? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, sometimes. You know, sometimes I would like to stay awake all night, you know, to meditate. So I drink the tea so that I stay awake. But no matter what tea, I <laughs> I, just, I just go somewhere. <laughs> I sit for a while. I don't know where I was anymore. Probably go somewhere else. But <laughs> I want to stay counting how many hours I meditate, you know, <laughs> like you, you know, <laughs> two and a half hours or not. But when I come back again, (laughs) oh, it's already morning, so (laughs) nobody's there to check me out, it's okay. It's uh, terrible, it's a bad tea, you know? (laughs) It's not my fault. The tea didn't do its job, huh? Yeah, I did, I treat the tea very nicely, you know? Those uh, breakfast tea, it's supposed to wake you up all day, no? So it should do the job, eh? I put a tea in a cup. I write amount of water and everything, and I put some milk in it, you know, soya milk. Oh, soya milk tastes nice with tea too, eh? You can go without, but with soy milk is better, no? It's more tender, yeah? And I put a little sugar, you know, taboo, but I'm not afraid to be fat, am I not? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And I put it in the microwave. <laughs> Uh, it's also the microwave fault. It could should continue to beep, no? <laughs> right? Nobody help me. The tea doesn't doesn't work, and the microwave don't beep. Uh, what am I to do? Huh? I'm supposed to station some uh, uh, assistant there just to beep. <laughs> no, no, we don't have we don't have that much time anymore. Ever since you have this SMTV, they're so busy. Everybody, my assistant have to help me, you know, to do this. Uh, all kind of work, you know, printed out the, the news and the SMTV news and whatever, and I have to read them and okay or not okay them, you know. And the news news magazine, all kind of things they send to me. Anything. Anything, my God. I don't know how they find so many things to send to me, <laughs> to ask, ask a lot of, of advice. I don't know how, how they find so many questions. <laughs> okay, very busy. So the attendants also busy, you know themselves. Yeah. So your life is good. Yeah. Everything okay? Yeah. You still like SMTV? Yeah. yeah. What what program you like best? Tell me. Don't don't say uh, about my lecture. That I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like it already. Anything else you like? I like cooking show. Cooking show. Oh, vegetarianism. Yeah, that's good, huh? They have always new stuff for you, huh? Can you cook accordingly? Yeah? I mean, according to them? Sometimes. Why sometimes? No time? No time or what? Difficult the material to, to buy. Okay, well, just for you to, to know, in case you want to try it. You don't have to try every day, same, you know. <laughs> Who can you cook like that every day? I'm telling you a secret. We are each. We are eating just a, a brown rice, mung beans, and sesame every day. And only whenever I'm cooking for SMTV, then we have a party. <laughs> so my, my, my assistant love it very much. They love SMTV. <laughs> That's their favorite program. <laughs> Master cooking. <laughs> because then we can eat, you know. <laughs> Dogs also love it. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have time, really. We don't have time. So mostly we just eat the... Um, you know the brown rice? It's very nutritious. Yes. And there's a guy in Japan a long time ago, you know, his name is Oshawa, you know, right? Yes. He uh, uh, proposed this uh, method of eating uh, brown rice and sesame, and ground sesame and salt. Yeah? 
Okay. We are the Oshawa followers. <laughs> because it's convenient. It's simple, yeah? We cook two pot of rice, but I, am a little, I cheat a little bit, no? I put the mung beans in it. Yes, because, um, you know, in case, uh, in case he's wrong about the protein. <laughs> the mung beans has a lot of protein, right? You see, all the Indian people, they, they live of dye, you know? They live from dye. Dye means uh, this uh, b- uh, green bean, mung bean. Yeah, so I thought, okay, we mix Indian and Japanese, it cannot be wrong. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. So I put uh, uh, like uh, one third of, uh, one fourth of mung bean and uh, three fourths of uh, brown rice. Yeah, quickly stir, wash, and then cook. No, we have to uh, soak it overnight. We put it together and soak them overnight. Yeah? And uh, sesame, you should also soak overnight before you, you roast it and uh, chop. I um, mean, not chop, but ground, yeah? If you don't have a ground machine, you just use uh, the back of a knife or something, handle of the knife and chop it, yeah? And then you can eat. Or you use a knife and you chop, chop, chop on the board, you chop gently so it don't spray all over your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, because the sesame is still alive, you chop. <laughs> they chop. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, now you know my secret, secret of long life, yeah? What do you mean, thank you? You, you won't like, you won't last. It don't taste that good, especially if you're used to with the Thailand, you know, jasmine rice. I have to say now and again, we have to cook for SMTV so that we can eat something. <laughs> Some, something like a people, you know? <laughs> you know? The thing I cook for SMTV show sometimes that you like, you like it? Yes. It's simple, huh? Yes. Is it simple enough? Yes. What do you mean, oh? No? Not simple? No, it's good. So why is that? What is that? <laughs> huh? You go to Chinese shop, you can buy it more. Yeah. The things that uh, I have taught you, uh, they sell them in Chinese shop. Yeah, any Chinese shop. Chinese shop, they sell everything. They sell, of course, the meat and fish and all that. But mostly those in, in, in can or frozen food, you can find them. Yeah? I live off the Chinese shop, you know. <laughs> Without Chinese shop, I think I die. <laughs> because a lot of stuff, you know. Uh, rau muống like here. Ah, uh, rau muống được, huh? Yeah? Yeah, you can buy them. But maybe if you live in such a small town, then you cannot find but you go to a big town, buy it once a week or once every two weeks, and but you don't really need to eat all the thing I eat. No, what what did I teach you? Just tofu and some <laughs> vegetarian ham. I mean, vegan ham. There's nothing really, is there? Huh? What? Bean on toast. Oh, that you can buy it in any supermarket, <laughs> right? Did you try that? Yeah, I tried. Was it good? <laughs> did you try? Who who tried that? Only one person. Oh my God! And you told me that difficult to buy. Very easy and tastes good, huh? I bet they don't. They think it don't taste good until they try it. <laughs> so and you told me it's not easy to buy beans on toast. <laughs> of course, it's, it's, it's difficult because it's, there are no such thing as beans on toast. <laughs> you have to buy beans and you have to buy bread and you have to toast it. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Then you just eat brown rice sesame. <laughs> and I add some mung beans in it. You know, mung beans and green beans? If you don't have green beans, you put red beans. Who cares? Huh? I told you already, people worry too much about food. Huh? Actually, you have to be practically starving in order to think that you are malnutrition, you know? Otherwise, you just eat anything, you recite God's name. Not anything, but I mean food, yeah? Any kind of food. As long as you don't eat those, uh, you know, very uh, detrimental to your body, yeah, you you survive. Yeah, something uh, very strange. Uh, you, I remember that guy, the Taiwanese guy who who were uh, lost uh, in Japanese or something war in Philippines, and he hide he hide in in a in a banana plantation for thirty years. Is that thirty years? Yeah, 
and he just eat the banana every day. Yeah, and he became expert in banana cooking. <laughs> yeah, he said he had boiled banana and roasted banana, you know, <laughs> a raw banana, sliced banana, uh, eat directly banana. <laughs> Oh, all kind of banana stuff. He went banana for thirty years, <laughs> and nothing happened to him. And then when he went back to Taiwan, is there any Taiwanese people here? Yeah, you know the story. Yeah. Oh no, nobody translate today. Who okay, cares? Oh, you all understand English? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so smart, so smart. Okay, anyway, that's that, huh? Okay. Thirty years, nothing happened to him, and when they found him, they brought him back to Taiwan. Oh, they give him a lot of party, you know, meat, fish, wine, whatever, every day, and he died shortly. <laughs> what? He was better off then. <laughs> I know he was vegetarian then, <laughs> bananarian. Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, we're gonna đào chuối. Ông đào dừa, ông ăn dừa không hả? Ông lên trên kia ông ở, lên trên cái dừa ông ở hay là ông ăn dừa không? Ăn dừa không? Ông ăn dừa không mà sống nữa? Trên tàu lên sao? Ngồi trên chiếc tàu. Ai vậy hả? Đảo 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 dừa. Không phải cái Mỹ cái Mỹ thôi. Mỹ thôi ông ăn dừa. Tại ở đó cái đảo đó chỉ có 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 dừa không hả? Mỹ thôi dừa. Ờ à, đúng rồi thì có gì ăn nấy hiểu chưa? Thích à. con mà ông không ăn ăn dừa. Ông thèm ăn. Ờ à, đúng rồi thiếu gì nếu mà ông nổi tiếng thì người ta đem đồ ăn thiếu gì mà ông yeah. thích ăn vậy cho nó yeah. sống cho nó nó giỏi cho nó nó tiện mà. À. Thì ông tu nó ốm. Tự nhiên à, yeah. rồi. Chẳng dừa không dĩ nhiên ốm như cây dừa. <cười> có thấy cây dừa nào mập không? <cười> nhiên nhà ngươi không? <cười> cái này cây dừa dừa này dừa. Cái này tôm phu. Dừa cái bằng sinh đôi á không? Ok, ông tại mấy người tu khổ hạnh đó mà, ấy, người ta thích tu thường. Có có nhiều người ta đâu có ăn gì đâu, uống nước không, hả? Người uống nước không cũng sống được không? Đấy, I mean, oh, why not talk Vietnamese? I mean, there was a, a, a yogi in Vietnam, you know, he 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 drink and eat only, um, he live on coconut. He doesn't people bring food to him, he don't eat. Yeah. And uh, we call him the the Coco Yogi. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Đạo dừa, ông đạo dừa, the Coco Yogi. He was very famous, though. Huh? What? <laughs> and then, so because because he told me that in Vietnam we have this kind of a man, a yogi, you know, the practitioner uh, who eat only Coco. We call you call him uh, Coco Yogi. So I said, oh yeah, there's also now banana yogi. Yeah? <laughs> Because I just told you about the banana guy. <laughs> anyway, okay, huh? So, you see how people, or oh, strong will, huh? I overcome everything. Well, I don't ex- advise you to eat banana every day, okay? <laughs> you already look banana to me already. <laughs> don't try any harder, okay? <laughs> and cocoa also, don't try. <laughs> And uh, so he say he was very skinny. This guy, you know, the yo- coco yogi, he was very skinny. I said, of course. Do you see any coco tree that is fat <laughs> like him? <laughs> so he say he's a tofu yogi, <laughs> or maybe a twin coco, <laughs> twin coconut. You know? Yeah. Have you ever seen a fat coconut tree? No chance, <laughs> right? Yeah. So of course, if you eat coconut, you become slim, no? Yeah. Oh, the woman, don't try, huh? <laughs> Never mind. You look beautiful. Yeah. Tofu makes you look good. <laughs> yeah, you do look good, huh? You look healthy, no? Hmm. I'm so ring, huh? Đào thành đào sầu riêng nữa. Yeah. Huh? Hồi nào? Hmm. Đừng cái cho ăn mấy đó. Nó không biết thôi. Chứ ăn mấy món nó ghiền kiếm mông ra cho nó. <laughs> She says she give uh, the foreigner, you know, I mean, not Vietnamese. Anybody who is not Vietnamese to her is foreigners, okay? <laughs> so she says she give the foreigners 
they're durian food and they don't know how to eat, they go... <laughs> I say, don't give them that because uh, if you give them that after they become addicted and then you cannot find much for them to eat. <laughs> yeah, people can become addicted, you know. That, uh, that fruit is very, very special. Hmm. It, it smell, you know, like camembert. <laughs> Some people say it stinks, but it doesn't taste things like that. It tastes buttery, you know, buttery and sweet, and it's full of all kind of vitamins and nutrition. Oh, the fruit is hard to crack, huh? Yeah, that's why it protects itself so good. Anyway, eat whatever you feel like, as long as you have enough nutrition and it's good for your lifestyle, okay? Yeah. I don't try to eat your brown rice and sesame and blame me if you don't like it. You might become too skinny, uh, not because you don't have enough nutrition, but because you don't eat it. <laughs> it don't taste that uh, great, you know. But when I was uh, three months in the temple, a retreat alone, I eat only that. And because I survived, so I think I can continue. At that time, don't even have mung bean, just just brown rice and sesame and soya sauce. That's it. Yeah. In the beginning, you know, when I first came in, you know, people bring a little some fruit and all that. After a few days, <laughs> finito. <laughs> I just uh, brown rice and sesame and soya sauce, but it tastes delicious. And nowadays, sometimes they cook a lot of food and it doesn't taste anything to me at all. Don't taste so good. Taste like uh, serviette paper, really, like salty paper. Yeah, or straw, a soya sauce and straw. When you are not happy or you are too busy or you're stressed, or you don't really feel like eating. And if you eat, it doesn't taste that good. So whatever you eat, if it tastes good to you and it's enough nutrition, you know, accordingly, that would be fine, yeah? Don't worry too much about Because if today you don't eat enough, maybe tomorrow you make it up, you know? So it will be also fine. Just uh, because my life so busy, I can't afford to elaborate, you know? I'll be maximum in, in the kitchen, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, that's it. You know, I cannot just stay in the kitchen all day long, huh? And then you become what, you know? The kitchen got... <laughs> a guardian of the kitchen. <laughs> promotion, huh? This is a kind of promotion. First you're only an ordinary housewife and you become a guardian of the kitchen. Or kitchen guard. <laughs> yeah, in, in, in Asia they, they even worship kitchen guard, you know that? Yeah, every new year they you know, they treat him well and they give him offering and all that. Because He's supposed to go uh, up to heaven at the end of the year and to report whatever happened uh, in the physical world, you know, at least in that household. So they're very afraid he went up and said something not nice. So they even smear honey on his uh, lips, <laughs> you know, at the end of the year, uh, before he goes up, uh, be- before the first day of the new year. Before the end of the New Year, Chinese New Year, huh? Uh, if you're not Chinese, I think it doesn't concern you. I don't think he report anything. <laughs> Maybe he only report the Chinese and the Vietnamese, <laughs> because I don't see any uh, Westerner uh, worship any kitchen god. No, is there any? No, then it, maybe he doesn't report <laughs> the Westerner. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you want some more uh, food? Yeah? Hmm? Yes? Did you eat well? Yeah. But you still want some more food? Yeah, why not here? There, take it. Take it. <laughs> there, but, uh, the man and this is all the woman. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, share it. Come on. Celebrate. Yeah, for the men. Uh, for this side. That is for this side. Uh, food is uh, no big deal, but it does make people happy, huh? <laughs> it does make my people happy whenever I cook, you know? Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are so busy, we decided to go simple, you know? Yeah. Before, they cook sometimes, but they don't always cook good. Yeah. So I have to... <laughs> I have to... 
<laughs> I go and, uh, you know, <laughs> roll my sleeve up and do something. <laughs> and then, by the way, they think it's good to share it with the SMTV people. Uh, so they do it, yeah? It's good. Freedom is the best, you know? Freedom from, uh, from anything. From complicated life, from complicated kitchen, <laughs> yeah, from complicated cooking, anything. Freedom, more time, yeah, more time for every other meaningful things, yeah. Because uh, we are really lucky already, you know. Whatever it is, we're lucky, no? Because we uh, have a safe country to live in, yeah. And if we want job, we can really get it. I mean, it might not be the president of. Uh, United Europe, yeah? But uh, you can work for the United Europe, huh? work toward uh, helping them, yeah? And you can work in anything you want. Go uh, clean the window, yeah? Wash dishes, yeah, like we did when we were students. Anyway, if you really want a job, there's always some job, right? Yeah, if we're not picky. And then we always have enough food, huh? Eh? And then uh, we always can uh, have a freedom to come and go meditate together, yeah? In some country, this is not possible, yeah? In some country, even if I want to go there, visit the initiates, I cannot. You understand me? Because if I go there, I cannot do anything also, yeah? I might not even be able to sit there, <laughs> yeah? I might have to go somewhere. No, according to whatever. Sometimes policy is not always suitable for our practice, yeah? But it's getting better, no? It's getting better all the time. Even uh, Vietnam now, all the Vietnamese overseas can go home. No need visa. Mấy người Việt Nam bây giờ muốn về về thôi khỏi cần xin visa gì hết xứ chưa? Chính phủ càng ngày càng mở mở mang, hả? Yeah? Never seen anything like that, huh? It's not... <laughs> It's like miracle, no? Good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Very positive. It's getting better and better all the time. So we should be really grateful for whatever is happening, huh? Yeah. Mm. It's always good. It's happening good, good, good all the time. Wonderful. And now you can come and sit together. All of you here? All of you sit here? Here? Or is there any more somewhere else? More outside? A few. Did you give them a, the... Chocolate? Okay. It's not much, just symbolic, yeah? Symbolic. All right. Any question? Any, like, urgent question, like, if you don't ask, you die? No, <laughs> <laughs> no huh? You don't, huh? All right. Everything okay, guys? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, the place is small. That's why they cannot invite all of... Uh, other members, yeah, of uh, other member nation cannot come, right? Who cannot come? Many, huh? Some other country cannot come, right? Yeah, because the place is small, you know. You can see it. Yeah, the heart is big, but <laughs> size does matter, huh? Who knows? Maybe one day we can find a bigger place. Maybe. Who knows? I say, who knows? Maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm still looking, but sometimes you have this and you don't have that. You know? How come? The world is so big and difficult to find a place, you know? Some place is very big, but it doesn't have a lot of bathroom and, and, and toilet facility. And you're not allowed to build more and all that kind of thing, you know? A lot of stuff. And also, um, how to say, communal bathroom is like... Uh, like sewage system, you know, <laughs> it don't last very long, and you always have to take care. It's it's a kind of nuisance. So now and again, uh, we we just take turn to meet somewhere, and it's also fine, huh? Maybe if we cannot find a better place, I found many places, but it doesn't work always, eh? Remember, yeah? Then we have to go somewhere. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody who is not happy, raise hand. <laughs> Anybody who who find is not good here, raise hand for me. No? Very smart. 
<laughs> if you raise your hand, you know what we do, right? <laughs> Easy, just take him outside, put him uh, next to the electric pole. <laughs> You know, whenever I cook, my uh, assistant always say, hmm, very, very nice, very nice. I say, very smart. <laughs> because if you say not nice, then you go in the lake and I feed you bread like, like the ducks, you know? Feed them at the duck feeding time together, <laughs> some bread. <laughs> and uh, lectures, maybe, yeah. Okay. Did you eat some chocolate, you too? No? You yeah. have? Oh, poor thing. Anybody know why? The master asked the disciple to smell the flower and write out what it was, what it is. Anybody knew? Why does he do such a, you know, he looks so obvious thing. Yeah? Why? And still somebody don't even describe it as a rose. They say something else. Yeah. To find out the one who is, I mean, he knew, but to find out who is clear thinking. Uh-huh, Yeah. Yes, it's also a parable again, you know? Like, okay, what you see is what you see. So don't make something out of it. <laughs> and if you see the truth inside, yeah, then outwardly you should manifest it as well, yeah? Because if a person who say he saw truth and he saw the virtue and beauty of God and outside he doesn't act like that, then how, how, how you even know? Huh? If a rose doesn't look like a rose, it doesn't smell like a rose. Then it is the yeah, rose is not a rose. <laughs> Too obvious, right? Okay. <laughs> and somebody who see the rose, it look like a rose, and it does smell like a rose, and then still talking nonsense about it. Then of course he didn't get it. Then you see what I mean? Yeah. So you don't always think that the master why do such such thing, you know, why necessary to test a disciple, my God, what a test. Just to say a bottle of water is a bottle of water, what kind of test is that? And still somebody fell. This typical, no? Yeah, you know it too well, huh? you are laughing, smiling. I, I know that green is here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know it but we do the wrong thing all the time. Huh? So complicated mind, you understand me? Yeah. <laughs> if something smell like a rose, look like a rose, and it grow on a rose bush, well, what is that then? <laughs> huh? What is it? Is a banana maybe? <laughs> a banana in disguise, maybe? <laughs> oh yeah, incredible. People are so incredible, I can't believe it. Yeah. Are you laughing? But it's true like that. <laughs> Some of you, eh? No? The obvious thing, yeah? I thought, you know, <laughs> when I tell somebody to do something, and I said it straight in plain English, and he still do something else around it. I say, why? You didn't understand? Yeah, but I thought. <laughs> I say, if you don't thought for a moment <laughs> and just do what I tell you, <laughs> it was save us a lot of trouble, <laughs> more direct, you know. I thought, <laughs> it's always, I thought, you know. If I say, I want an apple juice, and you bring an orange juice, and then you say, I, I thought. <laughs> I thought you mean orange. How can I mean orange? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, but they always do that, never. Okay, how many more people are still outside? Some more outside? A lot? Really? Nobody go home yet? Ah, some, eh? Some. What? A quarter has gone home? Really? Who say? Ah, okay, a quarter only. And some are threatened to come back tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, yeah, because to work, you know, like one guy, you know, the cameraman was here, 
he has to go back to Germany. But he come back tomorrow, <laughs> all the way from here to Germany and come back. How many hours? This book. Oh, thank God, eh? But still, it's a very a demonstration of something, <laughs> of a rose maybe, <laughs> or a banana. <laughs> Must be banana. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cannot miss it, huh? <laughs> no, because he, he just started a new job, I guess, huh? and want to make a <laughs> good impression, you know? <laughs> it's okay, should be responsible like that, but it costs you sometimes, yeah? And no matter how much it costs, I mean, our time, energy, sometimes finance, we have to just do the right thing. That's that. And there's no argue, okay? The right thing is the right thing. <laughs> there are only two, two ways to do things, the right thing and the wrong thing. So, <laughs> and sometimes there's uh, some medium size in between, like, not wrong, not right, no good for anybody. <laughs> no harm, no good, yeah, neutral. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, this is uh, one of the order of Sufi, you know, Sufism, Sufism, yeah. It's one of the, maybe a little later day of Muslim, yeah. They're still Muslim, just differently. Like the Christian, they call themselves, born again yesterday, or I mean, <laughs> born again Christian, or I don't know, die every day Christian. <laughs> yeah, because the saint, Saint Paul or some, saying something, he said, I die daily, you know. And a seven day Adventist or eight days and all this. <laughs> a lot of order, yeah? yeah? So anyway, this is one of the order of this of the Muslim. They are very nice people. It seems like a lot of good master came from Sufi's order, yeah? And also they really are practicing the truth. Yeah. Perhaps at that time after that they form a different, you know, branch. Yeah. And in that branch, uh, fortunately, they have enlightened master again, you know, from the lineage, from Muhammad or, or other master after Muhammad, so they have a, a real teaching, yeah? Okay. Anyway, this is one of the teaching, one of the master. His name is uh, Bahaudin. Yeah, Bahaudin, if I pronounce it right, forgive me, the Sufis people. Hmm. He was sitting with some of his disciples, and then other followers come in to the meeting hall or meditation hall, main hall, whatever. You know, the followers are different from disciples, right? You know, right? It may be convenient method and one in practitioners, yeah? Hmm. Or some people, a true follower is like that. They know about the Master, they respect the Master, and they know the Master teaching is good, but they, you know, they cannot put down a piece of mistake, a beef steak or a piece of pork, they cannot put it down. It's so simple, but they can't, you know. It's just like now, you're cooking some beautiful soup today. What do you call that? No, oh, make me my water again. I'm not hungry, it's just, <laughs> just the soup. What's the name of that soup? Bung Reu uh, in English. Okay, we just say Bung Reu in English then. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to to pronounce it, huh? Yeah. What is real mean? Like moss or something? Yeah? What? What's it real? I ask the Vietnamese Americans. They sit in there like they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like they're not here, you know? <laughs> okay. I guess real, real you know, bung real. It's like because the substance of the soup, it looked like those uh, moss, you know, broken seaweed moss, you know. Rong reo, rong reo moss, huh? Yeah. Don't look at him. He's not American. He's not Vietnamese. <laughs> he just say yes, yes, because <laughs> he think master knows everything. <laughs> so whatever master say, <laughs> it must be correct. <laughs> so better, <laughs> better not his head, <laughs> or else, you know. <laughs> okay, I think I, I'm guessing, you know. Yeah. So that what you eat today is called a moss soup, <laughs> bung reu. <laughs> okay, maybe like that in English. Moss, mossy soup, <laughs> yeah. Moss, you know the moly moss. Uh, 
The green moss outside the yard after raining too much, they grow a little green substance. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it's called moss soup, huh? Mossy soup, okay. And it was the delicious, no? No? Oh, even I enjoyed so much. I wasn't hungry at all. I just uh, ate something before that, it was not long ago. And because you uh, come out to eat, and they brought me some, and then I thought, okay, I don't think I enjoy it, but I just eat to finish the job, you know. And then I enjoy it so much, I finished the whole bowl. <laughs> it's a surprise. Sometimes you're not hungry, but you enjoy it so much. And sometimes you're hungry, but the food allows it. You, you don't enjoy nothing at all. I'm sorry, uh, the master has to wait a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> when we are on the food, we <laughs> we stay there for a long time. <laughs> yeah, you love to go and retreat. The main point, not only spiritual, <laughs> but the food. Yeah, maybe. It's good for me also, since I eat sesame and brown rice a lot. This is a good, a very good change for me. Yeah, but I haven't enjoyed so much. Uh, two times I enjoyed it here, the food. You know, two times. It was really cooked with love. Uh, I wasn't really hungry. Okay, where was where were we? Okay, mostly soup. <laughs> we go from roast to soup. <laughs> it's the same, vegetarian, right? Uh, okay, okay. What I mean is, you know, the real soup. They don't cook with uh, with tofu like that. They cook with oh, smashed uh, crabs. You know, crab. You know the crab. Oh, horrible. They smash them and then cook them. Yeah, and use a, the smash one, you know, their body, something, flesh, to cook with it. And a special kind of uh, vegetable. Or if not, they use a water spinach or, you know, and tomato, the way you, you have. Yeah, but the way they cook is a little bit different. You know, it's, it's very according to region, but it's still the same and it tastes just as good. You see, so that is a very famous soup in Vietnam. Maybe you don't find it in restaurant, in Vietnamese restaurant. Many Vietnamese restaurants, so-called, they cook similar to Chinese, so I don't know the difference. Yeah, but uh, those kind of things that you eat, mostly in retreat and Facebook or anywhere that a lot of Vietnamese there to cook, is our home cooking, real Vietnamese style. That's why you enjoy so much. Next bar. Okay, so, you see, just a little different. You throw away the crap. <laughs> it's crap anyway. <laughs> and you put in the nutritious, you know, virtuous and harmless tofu. And it tastes so good. I bet you, not because I say so, but suppose somebody were to come in here and cook the real mossy soup like that for you with crap. <laughs> I don't think you would like it. It will stink, you know. And so what for you eat out of the suffering of a crap? It's crap anyway. <laughs> you know? I don't know why they don't call it cr crap soup. <laughs> it's made of crap. <laughs> In the English word, it's crap. So we don't eat crap. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> we eat the real food. We don't eat crap stuff. <laughs> anyway, so that's how you see. Just replace crap <laughs> which you should not eat as a human being. Why should a human being eat crap, you know? You should eat something good, no? It's okay. Instead of the crap, you just put tofu in and it tastes so good, no? Swear to me, it's all good or not? Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't have to swear, of course, I'm just joking. <laughs> what I mean is, you really tell the truth, right? Yeah. I enjoyed it so much, maybe because it's Vietnamese food, because I was born in Vietnam or not. You know, the body <laughs> is born in Vietnam, I mean. Was it really good? Oh, yes. Five precepts. <laughs> Tell the truth. Is that true? Yes. Okay, good for the kitchen to hear that. Okay, but I'm sure it is good. But because I want to be objective, you know, since uh, this body is born in Vietnam, it gets been fed all this Vietnamese stuff, so... Maybe I liked it, but I didn't know if you like it or not. Even yesterday, I said, why don't you guys buy some bread and, you know, do some Western food for the Westerner, the poor people who come here, eat, <laughs> you know, imitation crap all the time. <laughs> huh? No, you don't, you don't mind? You eat that at home? <laughs> 
You had enough uh, Western food? Okay then. Is that true? Yes. All right. Then I don't have to feel sorry for you, do I? Oh, I'm just a uh, over busy body, <laughs> like all mothers. <laughs> okay. Then it's wonderful. Then continue with Chinese Vietnamese food, okay? <laughs> all right. Yeah. I just worry too much, yeah? And if you still don't, not too many people anyway, if you don't have enough money for a kitchen, you tell me, okay? Yeah, I give more, all right? Yeah. I give some already, but just for the ten and a little extra for my own use. <laughs> Since I have a room and a bath, private bathroom. <laughs> First class service. I got to pay more than you guys, no? <laughs> okay, anyway, if not enough, you tell me, eh? They don't have to pay any more, okay? Until they leave, all right? You got it? If not enough, just tell me. Ah, you're welcome. I think they overcharge you this time. <laughs> you know, sometimes some shop they put a price so high, and in the midway they say, 50% reduce. <laughs> but it's more expensive than the non reduced shop. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Actually, because they counted all the tents and, you know, the, the equipment and every other necessity, you know. It's not like uh, my hotel in Oslo. We had everything already. Oh, actually, we didn't, uh, you know. But whatever board is stay there, you know. I can't make you pay for that. Well, I could, but I didn't. I didn't want to, you know. You know. Uh, the master say, hey, you, <laughs> you have to be honest. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Whatever I can pay, I pay for you. Yeah, but if you can, you pay yourself, you know. And my money, I save it to help the more need- needing people. You are able, you know, you're smart, and you have job, you have each other, have been each other, you know, why do I have to feed you? I mean, <laughs> I feed the homeless, the poor, the disaster victim, they need it more, right? Even if you come here for three days, a retreat, or seven days retreat, and I feed you nothing at all, you survive on water, no? And go home and eat, and you could lose a few pounds. <laughs> <laughs> The woman, no? Huh? So even if I don't feed you anything, it's okay too, huh? You won't die because you have a home to go back. You see what I mean? And you have money, you can sneak out in a coffee shop nearby and feed yourself, I'm sure. So the victims of the disaster, you know, touch my heart more. Not like I don't love you and I, sh- I should feed you, of course, you know. But since we are in a such a situation like this, I'm more disaster, you know, many times like this, and a victim need it more. And nowadays, it's more convenient to help them than in the old time. In the old time, we don't have a car, transportation. Even if we want to help the African, it's impossible. We don't even hear about their disaster in those times. So it's a different, yeah? So the master will feed you all the time, whatever he has. I would do the same too. Yeah, we work out fine, you know, the one who don't have money don't pay, and that's okay, it's the same, yeah? And the money I save, I give it to the needy people, yeah? Oh, pay for whatever. <laughs> Sometimes I send TV. <laughs> they want more clothes or whatever, you know, whatever. Equipment, you know, because equipment don't last forever, you know. And they are, you know, they can be expensive. It's okay. It's worth it, okay? Yeah. So you know already, huh? If you don't have money, just eat. <laughs> Don't feel anything. It's your home, yeah? Your brother and sister are supposed to feed you anyway, yeah? If they don't, uh, your mom feed you, okay? <laughs> oh, why we talk? I told you when we're on foot, we can go <laughs> go on forever. <laughs> we belong to the Essenus group. <laughs> the Essenus in German means Essen, you know? Essen means eating. <laughs> Iggy some Essen, yeah? I mean, I go to eat. Essen, yeah? So the Essenus maybe came from German world. <laughs> it's perfectly fit for our group, yeah? We always eat good food, yeah? Maybe we also belong to the Essenus without knowing, yeah? <laughs> oh, actually, in the old time, if any group like that, they also cook very well, you know? All the people come and show off their talent to feed their brother and sister, you know? Yeah, it's, it's probably the same like us, yeah. I see the Indian group, you know, the ashram meet, 
and the people who belong to those the ashram order, you know, they none of them look very skinny. <laughs> it's a tradition. <laughs> okay. Look here, there are many. Uh, I'm reading you a story, okay, from the Sufism. Sufism, old Sufism, eh? This is a long time already. Must be sometime hundreds of years ago or a thousand years ago. Okay. There's a master called Bahodin was sitting with some disciples when a number of followers came in to the meeting hall. There's a guy, uh, Elsha, you know, probably the chief disciple there, huh? Ask them uh, one by one why they came. Yeah? So uh, the first one said, Oh, Elsha probably is the, the name for that master, you know, the title. Yeah. Ask them one by one to say why he came. Yeah. So the first one said, You are the greatest man on earth, said to the master. Praise the master. So the master said, I gave him a potion when he was ill, and so he thinks I am the greatest man on earth, (laughs) is one of the disciples and followers, you know. So people sometimes follow the master for just a very simple reason, because he or she heals them. See, in that case, Jesus had many followers, remember? They even come to touch his clothes to heal themselves. Yeah. So it's not like if a master have a lot, 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 and a lot, and a lot, and a lot of so-called disciples or followers. <laughs> that means that master is great, or that means that the whole group are great people, are great saints. You understand me? People follow a person for different reasons. Look at how many people follow, say, uh, Rolling Stones or <laughs> the Beatles, yeah, or the Buck, <laughs> yeah, whatever you name it. I don't know much about these famous people. You you understand me? Even if I sit higher, I am not much different from you. <laughs> so don't envy. Okay, we gotta be equal, no? <laughs> like master, like disciple, no? <laughs> <laughs> I have to catch up with you, no? <laughs> All the German, you know, they're like trees, <laughs> very tall. <laughs> All the American, <laughs> they're massive <laughs> to the ceiling. <laughs> Even the uh, chocolate, they're also very big. I don't know what they eat there in Africa. It's so big. <laughs> Vegetarian chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, and the French and the, oh, I don't know, Indian. Look at that Indian. Look at him. <laughs> huh? What do you call that piece? <laughs> yeah? Not only he's tall, he's big. <laughs> and now he, he lost already half of his <laughs> portion. <laughs> he's still like that. So I have to catch up with you guys, you know. <laughs> it's difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm trying <laughs> with the help of some cushion, eh? <laughs> okay, let's go on with this. That was the first man who came and said, You are the greatest man on earth. That's why I came. And the only reason <laughs> he called the Master the greatest man was because the Master gave him some medicine and cure his sickness for once. I could have done that with an aspirin or two. <laughs> and I became the greatest woman on the planet. <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of, yeah. That's why when mostly when they go out uh, to give uh, help to disaster victim, you know, I better not be there or I can't conceal myself somewhere behind. I do sometimes, but and uh, also I don't have time. But if I'm there, they'll be too busy about me, not about the disaster, <laughs> and knowing how you are. Huh? Always master this, master that. <laughs> and instead of tell you go give the victim something, you just hang around <laughs> with your <laughs> the gift in your hand and looking at me. Instead, you know, and then I will be like more uh, obstructive to the uh, relief operation than a help. You understand me? Yeah. Besides, somebody has to earn money, no? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I'm not proud of it, just giving money. But my situation is like that. I can't just travel anywhere all the time for that. So for that, I'm very grateful to the people who, you know, really sacrifice their time. Yeah and bring their heart and bring my love to 
comfort the victims. You know, they are like my extended hands, eyes, and mouth, and ears. Yeah? It's good also because if I go there, everyone will point to me, that's a woman you should thank. And then how, how we work. You know what I mean? That everyone would come to me, or thank you, thank you, Master Ching Hai, thank you this, thank you that, you know? Because people in that situation, they are very grateful. They're vulnerable. You understand me? So any little love, they will cherish it. And I become the greatest woman in no time <laughs> with this kind of situation, you know? So, um, but that's also dangerous if you uh, didn't <laughs> chop your ego to the end of the root, you know? <laughs> that's dangerous. I'm not afraid about that. It's just that if I go there in that situation, might be I'm not in such a good help even, uh, as a good help, because uh, the disciples always hang around me, <laughs> And everybody come running to 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 thank the the greatest woman on earth, you know. And then there'll be not a very uh, smooth operation, yeah. Okay. So sometimes I go, I just hide it somewhere behind, you know, looking or do something else. Well, better give money than nothing, no? Don't you think? Yeah, money they can buy stuff, eh? Even if our disciple don't have much time, and not many people can come, but they can give it to the native organization or the native, the, the, the disaster victim, and they together, they can buy and they can distribute it together. You see what I mean? They would be uh, helpful, no? Yeah, especially some country, poor country, the standard, uh, the cost of living is not high, yeah? Uh, like uh, $1,000 here is, is like $10,000 some other country, you know? Yeah, the, 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 you can stretch it out that infinitely. In India, I live for maybe only a one or two rubies per day. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. I didn't eat much, of course, with chapati, peanut, and <laughs> cucumber, <laughs> and sometimes a little treat. But you know, even then, you survive. You see what I mean? But here, what do you do with a ruby? I mean, even if the ruby is equivalent to uh, ten cent or something, you can't buy much with ten cent, no? Maybe one showing them. Is that possible? Not even. You see? See what I mean? Yeah. So even if uh, my money is uh, not that much, but it helps them in the time of truly need. And that's what it counts, yeah? Yeah, better than giving them a lot of money later when they already don't really need it. Okay, they can take it and buy a car or something. <laughs> but who cares about that at that time anymore, yeah? yeah? We don't mean to give them luxury or feed them forever. It's just when they really in desperate situation, children don't have milk, yeah? Old person uh, uh, lost all the medicine, for example, like that. This would be helpful in this such situation, yeah? Now money is better than nothing, huh? Yeah, better than not going there and no money also, right? Okay, so even if I cannot go there, at least the money will help them, okay? That's only the point. Otherwise, our money, the help we help is not very much, very little, you know? You know, thirty thousand dollars or how much is that, you know? Not really much, yeah? But it can help the whole village to survive for one week. You know, in some cases, you know, when or more than that, or more people than that. Yeah. So it's cool. Yeah. Like here you want to build a house, you know, it costs you maybe fifty thousand dollars, no? A house like this, how much it costs? More? Okay. A seventy? Hundred? Okay, maybe. But a simple house like this, even, for example, in Costa Rica, it costs maybe $20,000 only. You see what I mean? So if I give 20000 to one of the sisters who has her house burned down, that's equivalent to I give you here $100,000. It doesn't matter how much, as long as he gets <laughs> the thing that he needs, you see? So, okay, now you know. Why we go so far, I don't know. Okay, about the greatest man on earth, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So... The reason I don't go also very good, you see? Yeah. Uh, the main point is the victim got, got what they need, you know? Not I go there to show that I am the giver, and oh, I, this will be very embarrassing for me. If a lot of people keep coming and thank you, thank you, then I will feel very shy, you know? Okay. Now, so the reason that person came because the Master, he thinks the Master is the greatest man on earth, just because he gives them medicine when he needs. See? Right. So now the second one say, My spiritual life has opened up since I have been allowed to visit you. What is that? 
<laughs> ah, okay. It's, it's a portion. <laughs> Love portion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she doesn't know, you know. Just, <laughs> just take it, Master. <laughs> we don't care what we give you. Take it. <laughs> That's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful people. <laughs> so pure. Anything we do. <laughs> These are some kind of witch in Vietnam. Uh, the leaf is a round a little bit, you know, similar to the heart shape, but round, round heart shape. Huh? Periwinkle? I don't know, honey. Pennyworth. That's what it is. Pennyworth. Hey? Pennyworth. Pennyworth. Okay. And is it good? In, in, in America, is it famous too? Yeah. Get it all over the world now. Hmm? Get it in many places in the world. Okay. Wow. And I'm drinking a famous potion. You are the greatest woman. <laughs> <laughs> On the planet. <laughs> this is supposed to be good for your lung, yeah? Because they heard me coughing at night, I guess. Mm. I couldn't even think about that. I know everything. It's just when it comes to my illness, I, I'm lost of what to do. I don't have time to even think of what I know. That's the problem, you see? And you hear me sometimes, uh, this person sick and that, and I tell them to do this, to do that, and then he get healed. I know the herbs and medicine and all that. But when it comes to my sickness, I'm lost. I don't even think about what to do. I could never imagine this. You know what I mean? I don't even I think of asking you about this, even though I knew about it. <laughs> anyway, okay, blah, blah. I'm the greatest woman <laughs> when I need to. Okay. Wow, very nice. Mm -hmm. Refreshing also. It's not only medicine. It's a refreshing drink. I'm sorry it's so little. I can't... Mm. <laughs> I can't be the second greatest woman <laughs> giving it to you. But uh, you can try it. When you know what it is, you can buy it outside in the Chinese shop. They sell them bunch of... tons of them. One dollar, two dollars. Cheap, you know? You can drink the whole week with it. Mm. All you do is just uh, put it in a blender with some water and then filter the puff out and then only the pure essence and the water come here with a little honey or sugar, depends on. I don't like honey, okay? Anybody, please. I, I don't like it. I never liked it since I was young. Sometimes my mother make me drink it. I know it is very good, but I just don't like it. It should come from animal <laughs> where, you know, and... I just really don't feel <laughs> comfortable drinking it, so don't put honey in here. Is that the greatest woman put some honey in here? <laughs> just uh, raw sugar we do, okay? Yeah? Raw sugar. No honey, is it? Thank you very much. Yeah, no honey, milk, anything. I feel a little... How is it? Uber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything from animal, I'm very reluctant. Even before that, you know, even before I practice chronic method, sometimes I, I vomit if I drink milk, or, because it tastes like... Oh. <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> even not just to talk about the suffering of animal, you know. In the industrialized country, they make them suffer so much because of all the machine and factory farming, all that, you know, they put them in a small area, they can't even move their whole life, it's terrible. Even, but even in the, like in a normal uh, farming country, like they use the hand to milk the cow and all that, and they don't suffer at all. Even then I am reluctant to take it. Only when absolutely before, you know, before this, before I be, become the chief of this company even, <laughs> before I took over this job, before I even applied for this job <laughs> or any apply for this company, before that even. I always feel something wrong with taking animal stuff, even honey. My mother loved it and she shared with me, but I don't like it. Yeah. I'm never fond of anything that uh, sometimes Chinese medicine they put in it or even honey, milk, oh, I never liked it. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I can taste the animal substance in it, you know? And it, 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 it feels very <laughs> comfortable to me. Yeah? Not to talk about suffering or anything, just the taste alone. You don't agree with me. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Um, what was it then? The second one say, My spiritual life has opened up since I have been allowed to visit you. Second one. Cool in a song like that. So the master say, Explain to other people after, you know. He was uncertain and ill at ease, and none would listen to him. So I sat with him, and the resultant serenity is called by him his spiritual opening life. <laughs> just somebody listen to him, that's it. You know, the Master just sit with him and listen to him, and make him more confident, and then he thinks his spiritual life is open up. You see what I mean? Do you understand? So disciples have many types, huh? Followers also have many types. These are followers anyway, they're not disciples. So the Master was very honest. You see what I mean? Yeah, he could tell in them the reason why the follower called him great this, great that. Not because they understood the greatness, the real greatness of the Master. It's just because some, somehow, conveniently, the Master helped them, and at that time they need it, so they feel it's very great. Yeah? That's just one of the reasons I don't appear in front of those disaster area. you know? People at that time, they, they might think I'm the greatest woman on the whole universe then. <laughs> and then what for, you know? It's a misunderstanding, yeah? If they know me for my spiritual attainment, it's okay. But not just through a, a pack of rice and some mineral water or milk powder or something like that, okay? Yeah. Also, we're busy, yeah? Also, if I go there, the people will pay more attention to me than doing the disaster work, which is urgent. You understand me now? Okay. Right, number three. So the second guy was, uh, you know, a very shy and inconfident man, so the Master sat with him, talked to him, boosted his confidence, or so he, he thinks the Master understood him, and therefore the Master must have a very great understanding, <laughs> great knowledge, okay? But he didn't have to do that. All he does is just go to a, a, a psychiatrist, you know? I do the same, no? Huh? <laughs> okay. So the third one, third one, third follower say, You are the one, the only one that understands me, the Master, you know? The Master understands me. And all I ask is that you allow me to hear your discourses for the good of my soul. Sounds good, no? Sounds like he knows something, huh? Wait. The Master is not fooled. He has uh, no ego at all to fall into all these glorious praises. Look at how he explained it now. He knows it through and through. He needs attention, <laughs> the Master say. The Master say he needs attention and wishes to have notice paid to him. Yeah, you know, he needs somebody to pay notice to him, pay attention to him, that's it. Even if it is in criticism. Ah. See, some people love me to scold them. Ridiculous. So the Master say that. This he calls the good of his soul. The Master know it through and through and through. You see? And he don't have any ego to keep it for himself, to fool all the disciples and followers. Look, see? He say, I'm the greatest man on earth. Oh, he say, I am the only one understanding. He say, I open a uh, spiritual life for the good of his soul. He could take all this credit. You see? He doesn't. Why? Hmm? Why? No ego. He's honest. He use it. He use anything to teach his disciple to discern what is true and what is not. What is the real understanding of spiritual practice, and what is just, you know, sentimental, emotional, yeah? Or just uh, attention-seeking kind of uh, motive, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Another one even. <laughs> Not enough. The fourth one said, I went from one to another, practicing what they taught. It was not until you gave me uh, wazifa, means maybe some exercise, he said. I mean some spiritual exercise or something, maybe yoga, posture, maybe. Yeah. The name it was Sifa. Anybody Muslim know what it is? Exact? Okay. 
this is some kind of certain exercise, yeah? certain maybe yoga posture, you know. Like sometimes you go to a uh, master or some yogi school. They teach you just a physical exercise, remember, to bring the chi up and down or whatever, some certain very difficult posture, yeah, or breathing exercise, something like that. So the master gave him one of those. <laughs> uh, so after you give me a wasifa exercise, you know, I mean exercise, that I truly felt the illumination of contact with you. Wow. Big talk, eh? You think he understood? No, don't follow me. Did you? Did you think he understand? No, he played a bit better on me because better. something happened. Something happened to him. Let's see what happened according to the master down here. The master say, the exercise, <laughs> yeah, the exercise which I gave to this man was a concocted one, not related to his spiritual life, so-called spiritual life at all. I had to demonstrate his illusion of spirituality before I could arrive at the part of this man which is really spiritual, not sentimental. See, I'm right. All this sentimental crap, <laughs> the soup that we eat, is not real. You understand me? So sometimes you see the whole group, you know, crying and jumping and swaying around and uh, shouting the name of God and you know, whatever, you know, like a really spiritual congregation. Sometimes you see them, but not all of them truly have spiritual contact. See that? So maybe this master have gave them one of those sentimental support or oh, exercise. And then, of course, he feels somehow, you know, some emotional opening. And he thought, that's it, the spiritual life has been uplifted, has been opened to him. It's not it. You understand? So having a great deal of followers and they are listening to you and they are jumping together with you or dancing. They look like this and look like that or singing very loud and screaming or crying or whatever. That's also the football fans. They do the same. <laughs> more so, more vigorously and even pay to do it. <laughs> See what I mean or not? There's a difference, big difference between spiritual attainment or understanding and emotional outburst or emotional touchy-feely, yeah? <laughs> and sometimes some people say something nice to you and it touches some emotional part of your heart and then you cry also, yeah? But that by no means you understand a spiritual um, koan or your uh, spiritual has been elevated, no? Our human being System is a complex one, yeah? The top of the creation, of course. No animals, no other being has such a complex system that we carry around every day with us. We are walking God, yeah? We have all kinds of things. We have emotional, spiritual, we have painful feeling, we have happiness, we have joy. We can express it, we can withhold it, we can control it, we can let it go. Even a robot may look exactly like you cannot do all this. They can't control their feeling, they can't exercise things on their feeling, they don't have feeling. Do you see what I mean? They might imitate the feeling if you put some data about, <laughs> some, uh, if you download some, or upload, <laughs> I don't know what is the name of it, upload or download some information about emotion or when you see some funeral, you should cry. Uh, when you see a beautiful woman, you should say, oh la la. <laughs> Uh, maybe if you put all that in, then the computer uh, man will react, yeah? And it might look the same, but it's not the same, yeah? Just like the in Indian inborn natural NQ is not the same as somebody uh, make a replica out of it. It's also beneficial, and in the long run, it will be good to all human if we can or emulate some greatness of somebody or some race of people. It will be nice, even if just by exercises outwardly. It will slowly become our nature too. 
but it's not like inborn. You know what I mean? A born prince is not like a knighted prince. You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Master knows everything. <laughs> That's what you said. I learned it from you. <laughs> you always say to me, Master knows everything. Master does everything. Poor Master. <laughs> Thanks for your trust anyway, and the burden. <laughs> so, you capish everything, right? Hmm? The four people who follow the masters. You understand their spiritual <laughs> state of being or not? Yeah? They don't have any. <laughs> they don't have any spiritual state. They're just feeling something, you know. Maybe feeling a little loved you know, attentive from the Master, yeah, because nobody ever paid attention to him before. He is a nobody in the society. And here, uh, a Master who is surrounded by my disciples, revered by all of them, and listen to him, sit to him, with him, and tell him that you're okay. You're okay. You're, oh, you're okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe it's just... Uh, it's just a uh, scratching outside of the of the dress, you know. Yeah, the massage outside of the of the bullet proof jacket. <laughs> you feel some movement. You do know something going on, but <laughs> it doesn't help much. You capish? Yeah. Okay. It's just probably better than nothing. Yeah. These people, these are one one of those four people, or all four of them. They're looking for something to lean on, eh? to rest their a little tiring mental struggle with society at large, with themselves, with their friends, family, but they're not truly looking for God. Yeah. So the Master has to give them what they need. And what am I to do? If I go to Mexico, uh, I would give them beans and rice, no? That's what they like. Eh? Maybe I put a little extra if they're still hungry, but they normally would grab their beans and rice, eat their fuel, and then they don't really want anything. You see? If somebody likes apple, we give apple. You see? We might say, okay, banana tastes better, more nutrition, but we cannot force a person to eat. He might not listen. He loves banana. Ah, he loves apple, and that's it. Okay? And it's fine. So, the point is, not everyone comes to a master truly understand the depth of his searching, yeah? If he ever searched anything at all, apart from looking for maybe a parent figure, you know, a mother figure or a father figure, or a sister or a friend, that the Master also be, yeah? That is also fine. But there's something else behind all this friendship, motherhood, fatherly love that we have to look for. Yeah, for our own sake, yeah, so that we don't always rely on the master just for this uh, sentimental comfort, but we go forward and grow up and be ourselves and be the great self again. You see, that's a pity. Some people don't always come to master to look for that, and the master always say about that, but no, come and ask for something else. Yeah, just like, like the story of the the king. Remember. One day he gave all his treasure, you know, in different places and tell people to go and get it. And everybody go get the gold, the silver, the carpet, the silk, uh, the uh, embroidery, furniture, anything at all. And only one girl, she walked, she walked right to the end and found the king said, I only want you. <laughs> yeah, you see? That's a clever one. Huh? Because if he, she has the king, what else should she need for? She will never need of go in need of it. She will never be in need of it. Yeah. And uh, most people are blind by these uh, material comfort or possession, so they don't want to look any further. Because this is such a situation of the world that makes people that way. They are not born that way. They are born from glorious places, mostly. So they come here, and the Maya make them struggle for a living. So all they can think of is money, gold, 
for more comfort, more glory, more easy life. Oh, working day and night like this and don't even have ends meet. This is terrible for them. So how can they even forget the survival uh, necessity, you know? All they can think of is tomorrow how to eat, tomorrow have more, or the neighbor have better car. You know, it's just everything around them. Just make them think that way. And it become, it become slowly become like their nature. And they ad- identify themselves with it. And that's how the ego is born. And once they get all this, what they think is glory, then the ego is become like a solid prison. You can't break it out anymore. I earn all this. I made it. Yeah, I am great. I am clever. I'm good businessman. You see what I provide for all fi- my family. And I have more to give my neighbor. Yeah, or disaster victim, whatever. You know what I mean? And then the ego get more and more crown, <laughs> get greater and greater position, and nobody can talk to that guy anymore. Remember the joke yesterday? The guy said, you know, he, he has a desperate for a meeting and he wants to park a car. He couldn't find it, so please, uh, <laughs> please, Lord, <laughs> if you, if you uh, make me a parking space, I will go to the church every day. And what else did he say? Huh? And stop drinking even. And then the, suddenly a uh, park space available and say, oh, never mind, Lord, I, <laughs> I have found one. <laughs> I have found one. <laughs> oh, uh, it can be the true story, you know. It can be the true story. I heard some people, you know, some maybe joke from uh, Vietnamese refugees, but it's some story is true. I don't mean to offend them or anything, but because they told me these stories, uh, because they saw me eat vegetarian, they say uh, he's also vegetarian, you know, like twice a month. I say, why is that? He said, well, originally I should be eating vegetarian every day for three years, but I can't make it, so I make it twice a month, you know, like a paid mortgage. But I say, why? He said, because when he was uh, in, uh, you know, floating around on, on, on the water of the Pacific, he made a vow to Kwan Yin Bodhisattva that if he come to shore safely and make it to the third country, you know, the country of safety, you know, the refugees, then he would eat vegetarian for three years, as if it's good for the Kwan Yin Bodhisattva to, <laughs> to be less fat or something. Oh, never mind, the Kwan Yin Bodhisattva or not, help him to get to Germany. That was where I worked for the refugee before. And he couldn't make it every day, so <laughs> he make it twice a month. <laughs> Mortgage, you know, <laughs> paying in the least term, <laughs> instead of paying it at, at once, he do it twice a month. Well, at least he keep his promise. <laughs> it's just a lengthened promise, you know, <laughs> twice a month instead of every day. And he probably pay for the rest of his life. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, but at least he does, no? Huh? Not like the guy who found a pocket block <laughs> space by himself. <laughs> he even say, oh, my Lord, don't, don't bother, I found it. <laughs> I found it myself. Such a cute human. God can only be laughing. <laughs> All right. Uh, any question, guys, or any comments on these four great followers of the Master Bahodin? <laughs> Bahodin. Huh? He's really laughing somehow. A situation of uh, well, if you see such thing, wouldn't you be laughing? <laughs> you have him inside. If you were laughing, he'd be laughing, no? <laughs> you can go there and ask him yourself, why ask me? <laughs> it wouldn't be any harm if God laughs, no? <laughs> okay, anything? Any question? Really, no? You just sit there and get spoon-fed, that's it? <laughs> A typical. I'm the greatest woman, right? <laughs> yeah, Master knows everything. You know what? The ego stuff is easy to say, you know? It's not easy to kill. Yeah. Because you just don't even know that you have ego. 
and you don't even know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, remember the story about the, the three, uh, I would say, uh, there's a place where they put the crazy people. Asylum. There the three guys stay to one shell next to each other, and suddenly the one in the middle say, you know what, I'm Moses, <laughs> remember? <laughs> no, the story I told. And then the right cell man say, garbage, who told you that? How you know? So the middle man say, God tell me, God told me. And after a long while, the left guy say, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not tell you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, you have <laughs> you have tried very hard and I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the background that contribute to your difficulty of your practice, but I know you're trying hard, and it's okay, let's just <laughs> begin with that and <laughs> stay there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> you will get it one day. <laughs> if not, it's okay. <laughs> a rose is a rose, okay? <laughs> well, maybe it's your background. You know, you've been taught completely different things, yeah? You've been boosted the ego, you know, by some... sometime uh, a certain religious order or a certain place of worship. Not the religion itself, it's just a local, maybe some local religious uh, group. So being so eager to accumulate, accumulate more and more followers and more and more adherents into their church or their order of worship, you know, uh, to, just to be with the next one that I have more <laughs> uh, people going to the church uh, than your church or whatever, you know. The leader of some of the religious uh, group are not always enlightened, yeah? And not even trained religious priests or something, they're just jumping from nowhere, and they just, you know, kind of know how to talk, or just uh, dry, driven by ambition, yeah? And so they just uh, gather a lot, a lot of people, you just say, just say a word, you're Muslim, and that's it, you're Muslim. Just say a word, you're Buddhist, and that says you are Buddhist. <laughs> uh, you are my brother, something like that, you know? I don't mean the Muslim are like that. I mean, some people do make use of Buddhist tradition or Muslim tradition or any uh, religious tradition just just to make noise, you know, just to be there, just to be a leader or something. And then, of course, these people, uh, anybody come in, he would boost his ego and say, oh, you're great, of course, you will make a great, uh, you know, Buddhist or something like that. I'm sorry if I mentioned Muslim be just because you have been you know, but uh, maybe you didn't study well Muslim, you are not a real Muslim, I don't know. Okay, I don't know if I offend the Muslim this way. I don't mean the Muslim alone, you know. I mean, in any tradition, sometimes people make use of the great teaching of Mohammed or Buddha or Christ for their own benefit, and they ruin the repetition of that order, you know what I mean? And ruin the followers as well by just <laughs> feeding them with uh, poisonous praise, uh, you know, empty uh, glorification, and all kind of things. And after a while, that person is difficult to turn around, to accept the reality. See what I mean? You go too far, yeah? Difficult to come back to the zero point to redo it all over again. Maybe it's too much effort, yeah? Maybe you don't want to go. Maybe your mind already fixed and set in certain direction. It's difficult, you see? So the background sometimes has a lot to do with your spiritual practice improvement, yeah? Mm. So it's okay if that is the case, well, you take it easy and you do what you can, huh? Because, let's face it, if I try too hard, it will break, you know? Hmm? Yeah? It takes some time for the kid to grow, and some grow bigger, some grow smaller, some grow long, take longer time to grow, no? Eh, take it easy, man, whatever, huh? You are here already, what can you lose? <laughs> okay, any other question, guy? Hmm?